So solving a conical pendulum is just like solving all your other uh, force problems. And what do we do with our other force problems? FBD, free body diagram. What's the free body diagram of our conical pendulum going to look like? else touching it, no air friction will eliminate that. So why is it going in a circle? What is the centripetal force? What force is causing us to move in a centripetal or circular motion? All of tension? All of gravity? Which, which way is our centripetal motion? Or which, which direction is centripetal acceleration? gravity contribute to that? No, it's perpendicular, so it can't. Tension doesn't all contribute to that. Just a piece of tension does. This component of tension in the x direction causes centripetal acceleration. What does the rest of the tension do? It counteracts gravity. It supports the object. It prevents it from prevents the thing from falling down. So a portion of this tension force is up to counteract gravity, a portion of it is x, and since there's no, un, there's no other forces, it will cause it to move in that direction, in the centripetal direction. So we draw a free body diagram, and then we deal with the angles. So what is tension y going to be? Say, let's say the angle is here. T cosine theta. Tx will then be T sine of theta. So after you do the free body diagram, after you deal with the angles, what do you do? Solve F equals ma. Let's do the centripetal direction first. What forces do we have in the centripetal direction? T sine of theta equals ma. Since the A is centripetal, it'll be squared over R and then solve for whatever that you have in that direction. How would you solve for the T? look in the other direction. In the y direction, you've got some of the force equals zero, no acceleration in the y. So you have t cosine theta up minus mg equals to zero. So t cosine theta equals mg. And I don't know what we're solving for here. It's just a procedure that we're going through. Whenever you have tension, you're often going to substitute for it somewhere down the line. So do the substitution. Mg over cosine theta equals to this and this, putting them together. Times sine of theta equals mg squared over r. away. Sine over cosine? And there's one result. You can solve for anything there. You can solve for local gravity. If you had a pendulum and you swung it around like this and you wanted to know what the gravity was, you could go up to the moon and confirm it. You could figure out how fast it's going around. If it's a velocity, you could figure out how long it takes to go around, or the distance, distance and time from velocity. You could figure out the radius of the spin. How far is it away from its center point? With the angle, you could 
figure out the length of that string, given a radius. There's all kinds of things that you can solve for here, but it's the process that we're concerned about. It's, and it's the similar process for all force problems. You do an FBD, you deal with the whatever angles, and then you solve it in C or Y or X or whatever direction that you want to solve it in. It can be appropriate algebraic substitutions and solving.